Welcome to the channel Witness for Jesus, it's Dawn. You're going to hear an audio recording of a Jehovah's Witness Judicial Committee appeal meeting. We've already had the audio of the original Judicial Committee where they came to the decision to disfellowship. That is also on this channel and I'll put both of these videos in one playlist. But this is the appeal hearing. I want to say a few things first before you hear it, just because it's going to be important for context. Basically, the appeal letter outlined the reasons for disfellowshipping, posting leaflets that have negative information in them about Jehovah's Witnesses, and also she'd been accused of association with a disfellowshipped person. There was only one witness to both of these accusations, so the original leaflet information addressed issues within the Jehovah's Witness religion, and yet those issues are never dealt with or addressed in this appeal hearing either. And also she points out in the appeal letter that anyone who has a problem with her behaviour should have followed Matthew 18 and gone to her first, but they didn't. She hadn't associated with the Jehovah's Witnesses for over three years and she's also pointed out that over 50% of the congregation don't consider her to be a Jehovah's Witness or even know her. So on this basis, she is appealing the decision to disfellowship. You might ask yourself why. Why is she even there in the meeting and why is she appealing? Why is she even bothered? Well, she's bothered because her husband is one of Jehovah's Witnesses and he has family who were also Jehovah's Witnesses. So it directly affects her family and her marriage. It also affects perhaps other people who still consider her a friend who are Jehovah's Witnesses. This audio has some extremely important information because the elders actually admit and refer to baptism into the Jehovah's Witness organisation as a contract. Now, I'm a Christian and I know a lot of Christians and none of us refer to baptism as a contract. It's simply something you do in obedience to God. But they clearly say the uh, question that she answered and she answered yes in regard to being associated with so-called God's spirit directed organization they said you answered yes to that contract now <laughs> that's just amazing that they admit it I'm so glad they admit it and we've got that recorded also they use a verse in 1 Corinthians 1 10 now I'm really not going to labor this point because I know you want to hear the recording but it's important for me to just say something about that verse because they hammer it about six or seven times and they also include that verse in their deliberations as one of the reasons why they are disfellowshipping her. The verse is 1 Corinthians 1 10 it says in my bible I appeal to you dear brothers and sisters by the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ to live in harmony with each other let there be no divisions in the church rather be of one mind united in thought and purpose they use that to say look you're not of one mind with us you don't agree with our teachings you don't want to be a Jehovah's Witness so we are, I've got every right to disfellowship you but they are unbelievably <laughs> Uh, using this verse uh, in the complete opposite way that it was supposed to be used. Contextually, Paul is actually saying, as he continues in the chapter, that some of the people were following men. So in verse 12, it says, some of you are saying, I'm a follower of Paul. Others are saying, I'm a follower of Apollos, or I follow Peter, or I follow Christ. And then he makes the point of, look, you're all talking about who you follow, Peter, Paul, Apollo. He says then, has Christ been divided into fractions? And was I, Paul, crucified for you? Were any of you baptised in the name of Paul? Of course not. So he's pointing out, look, stop following men. Stop arguing about who you're following as well. <laughs> you know, basically. And then he emphasises that it's all about Jesus Christ. He says... For Christ didn't send me to baptise, but to preach the good news, and not with clever speech for fear that the cross of the Christ would lose its power. Now, uh, NWT translation, of course, says the torture stake of Christ, but basically he's just making it really, really clear that we are Christians, it's all about Jesus, we got on with preaching, stop arguing about following men. Okay, so they use that verse to disfellowship her saying in fact that her thoughts that the, the thoughts will infect 
the congregation. Uh, it's absolutely horrendous um, and it's clearly a control tactic. These elders are appeal committee elders. They've heard it all before and I found it extremely interesting how they um, more than once set traps to try and get her to say something. For instance, they set a trap in regard to why uh, do we have this disfellowshipping arrangement and I honestly think they wanted her to say something along the lines of well because you want to control everyone <laughs> you know or something to get her to you know sound like an apostate but thankfully she didn't fall for it she was just talking about the fact that she believes in the scriptures she has a different view to them why does that mean she has to be shunned by friends and family it's just unbelievable and I love how it's been brought out so I'll let you listen to it now you're in a field. Okay. So, um, a weeks ago, two weeks ago, yeah. on the Monday. Okay, there was a, there was a committee. Um, so as we've been told, um, the accusation was uh, apostasy um, and associated with disfellowship um, people. And um, the decision that the committee had made at, at the time was to disfellowship, and then you've written in an appeal to that. Okay. So we're here to listen to that appeal. Um, would you like to make a statement or would you like to tell us why why you're appealing it? We've, we've got your letter, so thank you for writing that in. Because um, my accusers, we only had one accuser for each um, allegation, which to me, the proper process has been followed because Jesus said, that if your brother sins again, if you have a problem with your brother, take it to him. If he doesn't listen, take two people. If he doesn't listen, go to the, the church or the congregation, speak to them. And if he doesn't, then that's it. But instead of coming to me personally and saying to me that they were offended, they didn't say that. I said in my first um, meeting, I said, Listen, I wasn't targeting witnesses. It's something that was that I hold dear to me in the sense of what my leaflet said. You didn't read it. Is it true? Is it factual? But it's just viewed as something to be disregarded, which is fine. I didn't drop it in. I, I mentioned to him that it was me that dropped it. It was two of us. I'm not going to reveal who the second person was. But I said to him, I know where he lives, know where the other brother lives, why would I go and drop it in their little books? Because if he take, took the time to read it, he'll see that it doesn't say, witnesses, this is what's happening in your congregation. It says something different. So to me, that's just, that's my argument. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. So, so I mean, how do you feel about the views of Jehovah's or the beliefs of Jehovah's Witnesses? As long as it doesn't conflict with the Bible, then I'm happy with it. Yeah. But if it doesn't, if it goes contrary to what I have read in the Bible, then that means then the Bible supersedes what is spoken about. Okay. So, so do you feel, or did you express to the brothers, do you feel the governing body? You hope of God's using them to dispense um, spiritual food? From my understanding of the Bible, that's not something that I've read in the Bible. Okay, so you, you don't feel that the, the governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses are faithful slaves to them? Faithful slaves, not slaves. And Jesus died for all of us. He didn't die for just a select few. And he said he's going to send us a helper which would teach us things, being enemy disciples. So my understanding is why just a select few? Mm. And if, if, if he's using them, fair enough, what proof? It's just like in the Bible times, in ancient times, when Moses, um, Jehovah commanded Moses that he's going to um, use him. What did Moses say? Moses said, suppose the people doesn't believe me because you need to be back. Actually, you, if you're saying you're representing somebody, what proof have you got that you're representing somebody? Mm. So if I've been given the proof, then but so far I'm waiting for, for the proof because 
Moses was able to use supernatural powers given to him by Jehovah to show to the people that this is not no any ordinary person. I'm being sent by Jehovah. So, from my understanding, you're saying that you are being led by God. What is your proof? I need to see proof of that. Okay. So, okay. that's how I feel. Yeah, okay. So, so you don't feel Jehovah's Witnesses have the truth, really, what we're preaching? What is true? Well, that's true. Truth is relative. Truth, it, it shouldn't be changing. You shouldn't be going from A to B and then back to A. If God is, why would God tell, tell, you, tell us something today and then two weeks down the line he's changing his mind? Yeah. That's not like how the God I know. The God I worship, that's not who he is. He's not going to tell me something, something that is detrimental or has a negative impact on his followers. Because if you look at the examples of David, when David did things that goes contrary to what Jehovah says, who suffers? The people suffer. Remember when he did the illegal census, who suffered as a result? Mm. He was... He had God's backing, but he went and he did something completely contrary to what he was told. But what happened? People died. So, at the end of the day, my point is, I'm following the Bible. The Bible teaches me, because we're made in God's image. Why should I? I'm not saying that there are not leaders, people that are needed to lead something or to coordinate uh, a, a specific Thing, but for you to say that God only grants you the be all or end all, you have the final of things, then if that's not what I have come to understand from the Bible. Okay, okay. So, so the, the, in general, the teachings that Jehovah's Witnesses hold, the 8 million witnesses around the world, um, about Armageddon coming, um, about not having blood transfusions, um, all the teachings that we hold dear it's not something that you would agree with if it's against the bible then i wouldn't agree with it okay so if from what i've read in the bible if it doesn't tally up with what is being mentioned then i, I have to accept the word of god above all else yeah. not somebody's interpretation of it so that's how i see it okay Obviously, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that, that's, that they are following the Bible, and as you'll know from coming to meetings, that's what we study the whole time. So, um, but but what, what we're trying to um, just understand is your views about because as Jehovah's Witnesses, we believe that what that we're doing exactly what the Bible teaches. So, if people are don't agree with those teachings, and then they're trying to teach other people. That, that the witnesses are wrong, that the teachings are wrong, that would constitute apostasy. Can you see that? I'm not saying that you have to agree with it. Every Jehovah gives freedom to every person. Exactly. So yeah. we're not we're not for a minute trying to force you. No one ever forces us to be to be Jehovah's Witnesses or to get baptized. <laughs> it's completely our own free will, and we're, and you're free to go. We understand that um, that you don't agree with our teachings. So. I'm free to be left alone because I'm not going out there. I haven't associated with the, the, the congregation for a number of years. And as I've said to um, two elders that came around, I said, if my friend or my my close friends or family ask me why I've stopped attending, I'm going to explain to them why. Yeah. And if what they're hearing does not sit with them, or they're not happy with what I've been told and they say if you don't mention anything else I'll leave it at that it's not for me to decide somebody's belief mm. I've not stopped from attending meeting I've always said to him that your belief is your belief we're not we're not one in that sense yes it would be nice if he has my support in what we, we in what he thinks and believes, but I've never said to him, you cannot go to meet him. Mm -hmm. If he's going to meet him, most of the time, I'll make sure that his suits are ready for the meeting. If he's going to assembly, make sure that I wake up, cook his meal, 
sought him because I appreciate that. My mother-in-law, who is a witness as well, went around to her house, set her JW broadcast. That's for, that's for them to decide. Yeah. I cannot force their hands and uh, say, this is my belief, accept it. Yeah. And that's my, my thing, is just leave me to be mm. who I am. I'm not mm. enforcing my ideas. If they, if for example, it's announced that I'm no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses, in how many people would know who I am? Mm. I would say over 50% wouldn't know who I am. Mm. They'll know the surname, but they are family, but they won't know who I am because I've not been here in a, in a while, mm. in a number of years. So. Okay. Um, so, so can we ask you why, I, I, I appreciate those comments, what, but you felt the need to help distribute some leaflets in the area to people who are not Jehovah's Witnesses, about the Witnesses, you, you feel that we... Because I have a problem with the, the two witness rule when it comes to child sexual abuse. That, that's something that I hold very dear. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are not aware of it, so people need to know, and also the shunning, because why would Jesus not talk to a person because that person disagrees with their the, the what their interpretation of the Bible and your interpretation of the Bible they might disagree mm -hmm. because to me that's not Christ like Christ would never shun anybody <coughs> the, one, the 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 there's so many occasions in the Bible even the prodigal son when um, the, the 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 son can you honestly say that he was repentant? He wasn't repentant from what he knew, we, what I've read, because he was, he said he's going to go back to his father just to, to get his father's scrap because he, he was down on his luck. The father saw him from a distance. He didn't even know what was on the son's mind. The fact is the son came back. He doesn't know anything, but he was able to go out, welcome the son. So why should we treat somebody who, I, I firmly believe that, yes, if a person is doing something contrary to what the Bible says then, by all means, I hold my hand up and say, but when it's something to do with the disagreement in, 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 in Bible, which is open to interp so many different interpretations, then why should somebody be penalized because they have a different opinion to mine or yours? Mm. That, to me, why would you not talk to a person? Why would you shun a person because of that? To me, that's not Christ-like. So, why do we shun people? Why, why, why do Jehovah's Witnesses disfellowship people? According to your rules, they are unrepentant sinners. But what does what constitutes an unrepentant sinner? So, what's the goal of the, of the disfellowshipping? Of disfellowshipping ah, you, you mentioned that it seems as if the goal is to bring that person back. Is one is one. One goal, yeah. Which is one of the main goals because a person, and if, if, if a lot of disfellowship persons who return are honest with themselves, do they really come back because they've, this, they, they want to have a close relationship with God again? Or is it because they've, their family are forced to shun them? So they've come back because they, they, they have no other choice but to come back because mm. it, without coming back they wouldn't have their family or their friends as support we can't judge them only, only jehovah can judge that can't they? but we do judge and we're judging right here well we we can only judge from the outward appearance um if, if they appear to be repentant or not um looking at bible verses so we if one wants is repentant and wants to come back into the truth um we we can't we, we will allow them to do that but what, what's the other goal of disfellowshipping? One, one is, is to hopefully lead them to repentance, it's true. What, turn what's the other one? The, turn back from their ways. <coughs> so the other one is to keep, as it says in Corinthians, to keep the congregation clean. But are we really keeping the congregation clean, brother? Because there are diehard people, as I've mentioned in my first meeting, there are people that come to the meeting that you're not aware of. So there are people, because you cannot read the heart, you cannot judge people because there are people sitting there and even in the same watchtower, you've had cases where 
their elders who sat on judicial committee and they're judging somebody and that same brother it, who is judging that person and disfellowship in that person they're the same one that's doing it even far worse than what what that that that, that person supposedly guilty person is doing but how can you keep a congregation clean when we're all imperfect because there are things in the bible that the bible clearly states we shouldn't do but we do it anyway and unless you have a conscience and unless you realize the extent some people might view it the fact that if they it's between them and god so if they've done a wrong then they'll go and they'll they'll speak to they'll speak to pray pray about it and then they won't do it again there are others who think that they have to come and confess it to a man for for them to be able to have a clean conscience between man and god but keeping the congregation clean to me that's that's trivial that's that's i don't think keeping the congregation clean by disfellowshipping someone keeps the congregation clean and, and, and that's that's fair that you have your opinion but it is what the bible tells us to do and that's why we do it and that, that again with all of jehovah's teachings mm -hmm. with jehovah's witnesses we follow what the bible says we, we, your opinion you're welcome to it you may feel that some of the elders who judge are doing things themselves i don't know that um and again i'm not going to judge my brothers um, i've been the truth 50 years and i think it's a very rare occasion that a brother who's judging on a committee is carrying on things himself and if he does the bible says that it will come to light and, and it does come to light but oh, but the time. large majority of elders are very faithful brothers who study god's word who pray regularly who preach regularly um, and it, it is a weight assignment but it's one that the bible puts on one that jehovah gives to us so it's not for us to judge what those brothers are doing and you call the religion the truth jesus said he's the way the truth and the life so why do we associate an organization with calling it the truth to me that's going against what jesus said because jesus said where has jesus said that his religion that this religion is going to be the truth he said he, he is the way the truth so calling a, an organization an imperfect organization truth to me that that's yeah we, we can say you, you're not really okay i just want to be left alone brother i can see that that's, I, okay, that's, and, and, and you're welcome to no no one forces anyone to be a jehovah's witness um with you, you know that when you studied um i mean what age do people get baptized in most churches around the world little babies mm -hmm. a few months old that's, no, that's when they the have catholic. no choice that's the catholic yeah. thing well there's many religions church of england do you think it's okay for a 10 year old Anglic to be baptized either anglicans but witnesses get baptized children as young as 10 yet what age did jesus get baptized have you ever seen jesus baptizing any children in the bible but yet we do it too we so baptize people when they're ready so the vast majority of people will be ready a 10 year old would tell you that they want they like pizza when they're 16 they don't like pizza anymore you might think so and a lot of ch children are coerced into baptism because they if they don't but the, you always hear oh when are you getting baptized are you baptized and to actively tell somebody and to coerce somebody one and the same yeah. if you've got a, a if, if you've got a, a man who would like to go out with a lady he can ask her outright and say i'd like to do this with you or he could wine and dine her just for the purpose of having her yeah just getting back to the subject um what, what i mean again I've not experienced that. I know that our publications um, encourage that we shouldn't get baptised until we're ready, and it encourages children to be ready, and quite often. So I mean, that's another thing. But a person um, like yourself, it was your decision to study for quite some time, uh, and then to get baptised. It was your choice. Nobody forced you to be baptised. No, and then, no. and those questions you answered. Have we just, have we just got the questions there? <coughs> One of them that we asked, that you would have said yes to. What, one of them, the second question was, do you understand that your dedication and baptism identify you as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in association with God's Spirit-directed organization? 
spirit-directed organization. The Bible says, Go therefore and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Why do we say spirit-directed organization? To me, that, that's not what the Bible says. So anyway, so you said yes to that, but you're free to leave. You're free to leave. What we have to do is, is to protect the congregation because the from thoughts, f f from the thoughts that you could share with those ones. Once the congregation knows that, that you're no longer one of the congregation, they know not to associate with you, and not and, and then those thoughts cannot <laughs> cannot infect them. What's to stop me after I get um, put out of the congregation? What for, what what's going to stop me from? talking to them and telling them stop if they want to hear they can hear they can so by you but they will have been warned they will have been there. we're just doing what the bible tells us we're just doing what the bible tells where us. in the bible does it say that i need to be kicked out because i've got a different opinion please show me brother okay we're going to have a look um i mean first of all we can have a little look at john Second John chapter <coughs> just, just the one chapter. I'll, I'll listen. Okay, verses nine and ten. It says, "Everyone who pushes ahead and does not remain in the teaching of the Christ does not have God. The one who does remain in this teaching is the one who has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your homes or say a greeting to him." For well, the one who says a greeting to him is a sharer in his wicked works. What teaching is that, brother? The teaching that's not helpful, that's not in, no, in line brother. with the pattern of truth. Read yes, it is. No, read yeah. the previous paragraph, the verses, because it says that the teachings antichrist, somebody yeah. who does not believe in Christ. I, I've never once said I don't believe in Christ. Never once said I don't believe in God. Never once said oh, any of those things. So you're saying to me that because it says antichrist, I'm not against Christ. It's that teaching, that's what the Bible is speaking about. So you've gone ahead and you've misrepresented what the Bible says. No. Brother. The, the Antichrist is not someone who doesn't believe in Christ. So you, if you did a bit of, did, just do some research on that. That's not someone who doesn't that's believe in That's what the Bible says. That's what it says in the preceding verse. I've read that scripture, brother. I've read it. it it's talking about the Antichrist. Because there were people who, there is even Jews now that still believe that Christ has not come. That's one of the fundamental teachings but, of the But Jews. just believing that Christ exists or came is not, enough for, it to be, is not enough for it to be a pure teaching. How can you say pure teaching, brother, when your teach, own teachings jump from backwards and forwards? It's okay if you want to accept the, the direction of eight men in, in, in America. It's fine. That's your, that's your prerogative. But I am not. I am going to go by what the Bible says. I'm not going to go above what the Bible says. And the Bible is speaking about the Antichrist. Nothing to do with any helpful teaching that, sh that, as I've mentioned in my letter, change from one extreme to the next. Even on the blood, blood doctrine, fractions. Where, where do we get up? The overlapping generation, brother. All those teachings. So, so can you not see that, that you're you're saying that to to to, people, to Jehovah's people who are who who have the truth can be dam damaging to them? That's why the Bible warns us not to. Brother, <laughs> please, Will. Um, I'd like to get your feedback on just one verse um, in First Corinthians one, in verse ten. <coughs> Can you go ahead and read the yeah. <coughs> Yes, sir. 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 I'm going to read from the American Standard Version. Now I beseech you, brethren, through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there 
you know, divisions among you, but that you be perfected together in the same mind and the same judgment. Okay. So, how do you feel about that portion of scripture as direction to the Christian congregation? We need to speak in one accord. So, Jehovah's Witnesses are, as you said, true Christians and you have a body of teaching that quite rightly gets clarified over time all of God's servants have gone through that you're telling me that um, who gave them the interpretation? as we had read out in the, the baptism uh, contract you said yes to Jehovah's organisation is spirit led now these what things does spirit med led mean brother? it basically means that after consuming the product of Holy Spirit which is the Bible and after having a strong bond with Jehovah God whose Holy Spirit directs his organisation an understanding has come to what is required of Christians on earth today but I want to put that to one side no, we, because we have to deal with this because you're saying spirit led yes they're not then in the magazine it says they're not inspired they're not infallible so you're telling me that the spirit gave them the wrong instruction because if they're if they're chopping and changing from for example the generation teaching how many times has the generation teachings changed if the witnesses stick to the basic truths of the bible we wouldn't be where we are but it's when you start going overboard by interpreting giving your interpretation and making it the the, the set in cornerstone belief until they've come up with a new new idea then you're telling me that God's Holy Spirit is making mistakes no God's Holy Spirit does not make mistakes men make mistakes yeah but you're saying their spirit is it's spirit led that's right so your, the interpretation is, is is granted through the Holy Spirit come down to them but then they've changed the, 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 the generation teaching over the years it's quite possible for sincere servants of Jehovah God to hear something read something quite clear from the Bible or to be quite clearly directed by the Holy Spirit and simply come to the wrong conclusion Jesus immediate apostles came to the wrong conclusion you gave the example of David and you gave the example of him with Nathan Nathan wanted David to build the temple that's a conclusion that a prophet of Jehovah God came before consulting Jehovah and he had to be corrected with that all of the Bible um, prophets all of God's servants have at some point had to have their conclusion uh, realigned Moses had that problem it's, it's actually not a problem it's just the situation that imperfect people have but this is a side question the question is about 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10 says I urge you brothers through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that you should all speak in agreement and that there should be no divisions among you but that you may be completely united in the same mind and in the same line of thought to be recognized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses to be in Jehovah's organization today this verse must apply the conclusions that you're sharing with us quite clearly show that in your case this does not apply and to be frank it's troubling to think that literature being distributed by you who was one of Jehovah's Witnesses I'm still a one of Jehovah's Witness I still bear witness to Jehovah okay, and okay, a member of Jehovah's Witnesses in our organisation today however way you want to word it that you who are baptised would distribute literature that doesn't fall into line with 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10 so my original question to you was 
How do you feel about that? As long as we're speaking out in accordance with the Bible. So if whoever teaches doesn't matter with the Bible, uh, Christ died for me also. So why can't I, I come to a conclusion on a scripture? Why do I have to wait on somebody to tell me as if I'm a babe? No, the, the, the point isn't that you could come to a different conclusion. There are different things that many of us have come to different about and waited to hear clarity and all this kind of thing. This is natural. The verse says, speak in agreement, no divisions, and completely united in the same mind and the same line of thought. This is a characteristic of true Christianity. I urge you brothers through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your line of thought, your sense of agreement, in fact even these shards of divisions that obviously come from sharing your point of view with anyone, are completely opposed to this verse. How do you feel about that? Well, I'm not going about talking to witnesses. Bring this is point. nothing to do with it just being witnesses. This is anyone. How do you That's feel about that? That's your interpretation, brother, because I, I can guarantee you that many of your beliefs that you have now, a year, two years, five years down the line, it's going to be changed. This is really for all of us in the room who are dedicated and baptized to, to consider for ourselves. In fact, the Bible itself says to test every inspired expression. What you guys don't do. <laughs> well, it, it's a shame to say that because after testing inspired expressions or direction, if it is found not to meet what the Bible says, you simply adjust. You, s you say you wait until the governing body decides on the interpretation. To be frank, that's my decision. That's fine. Well, I'm not going to take eight men because Christ did not die for just eight men. Christ didn't die for the governing body. Uh, of course when, not. When I read scriptures, for example... Who, who, who has ever said that? Why, yeah, why, yeah. why do you think Because you, you, that? you, you, your belief is that Christ, that he gave the... When he spoke about the faithful and wise servant, you believe it's, it's the governing body. But who did he give his life for? He gave it for everybody. And isn't that what we teach? You say the governing body is only interpreting the scripture. But he didn't, only, but he didn't only give his life for the governing body, that's what you just said. No, because... He gave they, his life for everybody. Because, exactly, and but because you've mentioned that the, govern, the, the governing, the faithful servants are the only one that's meant to interpret the Bible, and they're the only ones that you should get instruction for. The Bible says faithful and wise servant not servants not more than one is one yeah so we can we can we can try and uh, work these things however uh, this expression of faith and discreet slave it's describing the responsibility that it fulfills for example Abraham's seed sounds singular but actually his natural seed was all Israel and his spiritual seed are the anointed and they are all more than spiritual one. Spiritual seed is mm. the anointing. Yeah. That's, that's, that's okay, even if you don't want to accept that, don't accept it. Don't accept that. Accept that the nation of Israel is the seed of Abraham. Yeah. I'm, I'm is that one that's person or many? That's more than one. Yes. Is seed singular or plural? One. Thank you. So the governing body and the faithful and discreet slave being one in the same as we understand today, if we choose to accept that, this isn't a play on words or anything. But I still want to come back to this verse. Because the point about you sharing or speaking to others about what Jehovah's Witnesses claim to get wrong or some belief you have about Jehovah's Witnesses as an organisation and as well as any of the other personal feelings you have, uh, being a baptised witness puts you at odds with this verse. This is why you are here. So have your opinion, it's fine. But you must understand you cannot be recognised at all as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. That's your opinion. But how can this be my opinion when 1 Corinthians 1 and verse Does 10... The Bible speaks about Jehovah's Witnesses only. It's talking about Christians. 
And that's where you guys go wrong. You think that you're the only true religion. When Jeffrey Jackson went to understand in Australia Royal Commission and said, when he was asked specifically, do you see yourself as, the, as spokesman for God on earth? What did he say? It would be presumptuous. Mm. Why, w If we're going preaching to people, why do you think that God is going to take a select? You'd have thought that he would learn, uh, learn something by now by selecting a few, pe a few group of people to be his chosen people. Well, well, to be honest, all the teachings we have are based on God's word, the Bible. Uh, no, it's not. Because well, the question we're asking, your opinion. Yeah, yeah, the question that's we're asking right now is One based of the on God's word, the Bible. You said, Christ died as need, Christ is the mediator for everybody. But what does the current teaching of Jehovah's Witnesses are? Is that he is the mediator for, in first of all, the 144,000. But the scripture doesn't say that. He says that he's the mediator for everybody. But, and so that's not a biblical teaching. Why do you guys say that he is, and again, generation teaching, why do you say the generation overlaps? Before you said, millions now live in may never die. Then he says, will die, then change to overlapping generation. That, that those are not biblical teachings. Those are just one man interpretation of scripture. I can understand how you feel about that. It troubled uh, many. But it's a little <coughs> like Peter when he heard something confusing from Jesus. Because Jesus clearly said, without explanation, that you must eat his flesh and drink his blood. Jesus didn't explain what he meant. Those who heard that said this was shocking. However, Peter stayed with Jesus because there was nowhere else to get the sayings clearly explained from Jehovah God. We have got God's word, the Bible, clearly explained to us again and again. And Jehovah's organization, led by his Holy Spirit, will again and again look honestly at the Bible and if they see there's a place to adjust, they will adjust. Accepting the rate of change for the adjustment or whatever is up to you. But what you cannot do as one of Jehovah's Witnesses is preach, teach, distribute information that doesn't fall into line with 1 Corinthians 1 verse 10 and many others. The verse we just read in John. Again your teachings change from time to time so how can you say that means you're going against what Jesus said because Jesus spoke only the truth <coughs> but your doctrine keep chopping and changing from here to there so how can you say you're following what Jesus said as well because Jesus doesn't really deviate his teachings doesn't deviate it's true I would say Jesus teachings don't deviate but our understanding of them gets refined if we came to a conclusion that wasn't aligned with Jesus teaching you simply change. Yeah, but you were going against him in the first place. But we simply change. You're going against him in the no, first place. No, 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 I can, and I then can you're accept using, that. You're using the Holy Spirit. You're saying the Holy Spirit grants you, grants them the authority or grants them the help that needed to, 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 to dispense these things. But then the Holy Spirit, you're telling me the Holy Spirit is changing his, his, his mind on various topics. No, no, the point being made is that when changes need to be made, they're made gradually. Jehovah, Jehovah God already has that. That's scripture. The, Jehovah God already has that with the nation of Israel. For example, uh, one man should only marry one wife. That's it. However, the practice of, you know, um, polygamy was embedded in the nation of Israel. So Jehovah God tolerated and regulated this. Mm -hmm. However, when Jesus came, that was the end, quite clearly stated. One man, one wife. This isn't a change in Holy Spirit. This is something that has been quite expressly stated from the start, correctly applied after some time. <laughs> so in Jehovah's organization, those who came to know the truth through different means, who may have started practicing birthdays, they may have used to smoke, they may have used to do all kinds of practices. When they look again and again at God's word and come to understand that an adjustment needs to be made, they just make it. To be frank, this is why I'm so comfortable here. That's, that's your personal opinion. That's fine. Yeah. So, so, I mean, our reason to be here really as an appeal committee um, was is what you have done a disfranchising offence? Yes, it is, um, because it is clear that you are completely against 
the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, so that you don't want to be one. Um, were you repentant at the time of the hearing? And it doesn't sound like even today you feel any different about it. It's not like they've I feel it like the Bible says, brother. So. Yeah. So, Anis, do you want to ask it? Anything you else want to say? Uh, no, no. No, I don't think so. Okay. So, would it be okay if you could just, the, the, perhaps the six, the five of you, just leave us a few minutes and we'll just have a <coughs> call you back in. Thank you. Do you want your bag or your thing?
how do you feel? Yeah, totally. No. To uphold the position? Yeah, of course. I've, I've, yeah. I've, 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 I've never spoken to anyone apart from a clear apostate who tried to spell out such. No. This was like talking to an apostate. Well, it is. Yeah. 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 And, it, and it's their, their choice. They've got the free will to go, but you can't be a Jehovah's Witness and believe those things. And this what is the bit that happens next. Do we invite the committee back first? Uh, I think we do, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. We invite the committee back first to say what our conclusion is. Is it not? I think you've spoken about it. Unless we were going to disagree. I could be wrong. Let's have a look. If the committee, pe if the members of the committee agree with the judiciary, they should inform the wrongdoer. Yeah. The okay. presence of the judiciary committee. Yeah, yeah. So should they, they all come in? Come in with it. It's only if there is a difference that we discuss the things then. Yeah. And what you think is to us as the first committee heard that your views are very different to Jehovah's Witnesses um, that you're, you're allowed to have those everyone has free will on earth you, you may have your views but it is what we would count as apostasy because and, it, and we feel it can be dangerous because those, the, the, the things that you believe the, the, the divisions that, that it would cause if people thought you were one of Jehovah's Witnesses and you share those thoughts with them uh, it could be very damaging um, and we've not seen any repentance or change, so our decision is to uphold what the committee decided several weeks ago, that it would be disfellowshipping. Okay. I, I noticed you, you mentioned in, the, in your appeal letter that you were afraid that it would break up your family, um, and that there was no need for that at all, and take, um, you're a married couple still. There's nothing, there's nothing about um, that it would break up a family. Um, it doesn't change anything between you, so it may make may make things a little bit difficult. But don't don't feel that it's not to shun you. You live together. He's your he's your husband and has to fulfil all those responsibilities as a, as a husband. Uh, and you, you know, I just wanted to mention that and for, and for the sake of it, that that doesn't mean that, that doesn't apply to if you like if you like to be for the congregation. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.